CCP has announced a new game in development called Eve Frontier, previously known by its codename Project Awakening. The game is a space survival simulation defined by freedom and consequence. You awake from stasis as the last relic of humanity from a lost age. Civilization has decayed in the ruin of its ambition. Feral drone swarms scour its wastes, and survivors fight to gain control over its resources. In the shadow of the trinary, who will you become? Buckle up, Buttercup, because I'm your space auntie, Amoni Pinala, and today we're going to talk about this latest project from CCP. Before I get into analysis, I want to dive deeper into what CCP is saying this game is and will be. E Frontier is an online space survival game with an open and persistent sandbox. It focuses on self-reliance, tactical and emergent gameplay, and third-party development. Players can construct infrastructure such as storage facilities, trading posts, defenses, and more. Think of it as an enhanced base building. Through each structure having a programmable layer, eFrontier allows for greater modability and player expression on top of each base item. Constructing infrastructure and deploying it on the frontier does not require it to be programmed. Well, that was a lot of words. Crucially, there's one more thing CCP really wants everyone to know about this game. In eFrontier, your own items and all transactions between players are permitted. CCP games will not prohibit transactions outside of and inside of the game. They explain that there will be two currencies with eFrontier. Eve token a utility token that can be exchanged as a means of external value, and Lux, used only for in-game transactions. For example, Lux can be used to purchase items from in-game markets, to acquire station services, used for trades between players, etc. So this game is essentially a survival sandbox that utilizes an open source programming environment on a blockchain to allow people to build items in-game and the currencies it utilizes are its own bespoke cryptocurrency in addition to the internal game currency. As I understand it, this is what if Rust were in space and its functionality was inextricably linked to Web3. I wish I was joking about all this. I think the idea of a survival sandbox with fully customizable items sounds incredible. But the fact that it's utilizing the blockchain and cryptocurrency in 2024 suggests to me that this has nothing to do with making a solid survival sandbox game and everything to do with chasing the Web3 hype from 5 to 10 years ago. This is in line with CCP's history of trying to cash in on new fads in tech and game. Just to name a few. Dust514, E-Valkyrie, Gunjack, Gunjack2, Project Legion, E the Second Genesis, Project Nova. Now I want to be clear, there's nothing wrong with CCP wanting to make other games. Nobody wants to be a one-trick pony, and for CCP, who made a game that has somehow survived 20 plus years in a game market that has dramatically changed in that time, is wild. It makes sense that they would want to branch out and do other things. So why am I so skeptical? Well, in addition to the obvious attempt to cash in on the Web3 hype that hasn't been there for at least five years, CCP has a long history of making games that are not good. The concepts for their games will be more or less sound, and their promotional materials will be top tier but execution is garbage. On a personal level, I've been following the development of their extraction shooter for E-Vanguard ever since it was announced at FanFest, and I was 
hyped about its potential. Until I found out I wasn't going to be allowed to continue to the next phase of testing because I didn't... Mm. Oh, wait. Oh, right! I didn't post enough on the Discord server. That's not even a bit. Their criteria for the next round of testing was that you had to have made a hundred posts in their Discord server. So, because I only posted in the server to ask questions or leave feedback on my experience of the game like a good tester would, I didn't meet the 100 post requirement. CCP has a habit of making strange decisions like this that effectively clip their wings before they've had a chance to fly. It's such a huge letdown to get excited about what CCP does and then get smacked in the face with all their asinine decisions about the execution of their latest project. I did sign up to be a tester on eFrontier just to see what the experience would be like, but I have to say that the Web3 stuff is at best a grift based on false promises and at worst the kind of evil shit that tech bros come up with after watching classic genre films set in a dystopia thinking it would be a good idea to make the source of those dystopias a reality. That's all I have to say about E-Frontier for the time being. What are your thoughts on this latest digital Titanic from CCP? If you enjoy my videos, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends who might also enjoy my videos. Fly dangerously, folks.